All right, guys, so this is going to be a buffer calculation question from an AQA A-level chemistry pass paper. The paper, mark scheme and examiner's report will be linked down below in the description. Unfortunately, I can't show the actual paper on the screen because of AQA's copyright, but feel free to pause the video, attempt it yourself, see where you went right, where you went wrong and learn from your mistakes. This is key in chemistry. If you want to see more question breakdowns like this, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. But let's just jump into this and read through the question. So in a buffer solution, the concentration of ethanoic acid is 0.26 mole per decimeter cubed. And the concentration of the salt, the ethanoate ions is 0.121 moles per decimeter cubed. And we have a seven times 10 to the minus three mole portion of sodium hydroxide. So a strong base is introduced to 500 centimeters cubed of the buffer solution. Determine the pH, so that's, that's ultimately what we have to do in the question here, of the solution after the addition of sodium hydroxide, okay? And we have to provide our answer to two DPs. This is never going to change. At A-level chemistry, you always want to put your pH to two decimal places, just try and remember that. And I've added this uh, information for the Ka expression and what the Ka value is from the previous question 2.1. It's quite an easy question, so I thought I'd keep it separate entirely. So let's think about buffer calculations for a second. A lot of people, including myself, when I first started doing uh, A-levels, I, I got real confused with what was going on and got a bit overwhelmed. But once you realize the steps involved, it's actually really simple. And if you see one of these in your exams and you've practiced them, it's just six easy marks, okay? It really is. So let's just look at the process involved. If you've watched any of my calculation videos before, you are not going to be surprised with my first point here. What is step one going to be? Any calculation question, pretty much going to be start with the moles. Okay, I always say this, start with moles. Okay, that's gonna be our first point. And we're given some variables here, so it makes it really easy for us just to put it in your calculator, get it on the page and see what's going on. So what molar equation are we gonna be using here? We have N equals CV or N equals M over MR. These are our potential equations that we want to be using. Now, keep in mind, this one right here is always going to be the one that you want to use for acids and bases, just because it's always to do with a solution, right? So there's gonna be a concentration of solution, a volume of solution. So we can use that one straight away. So what we want to think to ourselves is, what is the moles of the, the weak acid and what is the moles of the salt? Okay, and that's what we're gonna start with. And this will be initial, okay? With buffers, you're always going to be having initial, right? This is what's in the conical flask, beaker, whatever to begin with. And then you're going to convert that into something else once you've added a acid or alkali of some kind. And that's, that's the whole point of buffers to keep the pH consistent. So let's rewrite this out. Initial, final. Okay, and this is gonna be the same with every buffer calculation, and I'll sort of expand upon what I mean here. So, as I said, start with the moles. Let's look at the moles of our ethanoic acid to begin with, right? COOH. This is gonna be a very common weak acid that you use um, for these acids and bases buffer calculations. So we've got a concentration here, so I'm gonna use my expression, so 0 0.260. It's in moles per decimeter cubed, so there's no reason to convert the units. And we've got a volume of 500 centimeters cubed, okay? So all we have to do is times it by 500. Now this is in centimeters cubed, so you have to convert this into decimeters cubed. Simple, times 10 to the minus three. Okay, same as divide by 1000. Up to you how you do it, honestly doesn't matter. Now let's jump ahead before we do the calculator uh, stage. Let's do the moles of the salt, the ethanoate ions next. So we're gonna have CH3COO minus, okay? So we're gonna have our concentration, 0.121, multiplied by exactly the same volume, guys, it hasn't changed, okay? 500 times 10 to the minus three. So if you put that in your calculator, you're gonna get 0.13 mole of the weak acid and 0.0605 mole of the salt, okay? That's the first two marks done. So even if you don't really know what's going on and you're freaking out in your exam, Start with the moles, okay? Get yourself some marks wherever possible and just scrape through. <laughs> Ideally, that's not what you wanna be doing. You wanna be confident with these questions, um, but that's just my piece of advice there. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work out, okay, what are the moles of the sodium hydroxide added? We don't have to calculate it. They've given it to us straight away in the question, 
Okay, so I'm going to write that right here, make a note of it. Moles of the hydroxide ion that's added, the strong uh, strong base here, 7.00 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Okay, no marks allocated here because it's given in the question, so yeah. So we've started with the moles, right? Let's look at what step two is. So step two of any buffer calculation. This is going to be really important to remember, okay? So going back to what I said earlier, we're going to have moles, concentration, and volume. So I'll put NCV of initial. And then you're going to have moles, concentration, and volume of final. And the only difference is we're adding a substance in here, okay? In this case, it's a strong base, right? So going back to step two then, let's do a little bit of theory here to so you guys can wrap your head around what's going on and it will help you so much when it comes on to all buffer calculations. So I'm just drawing out my equation here, uh, plus H plus, right? So there's two options that we can have with buffers, okay? We can either add an acid to the conical flask, whatever it may be, or we can add a base or alkali, whatever you want to refer to it as. I like base, I, I'm just used to base, but you can you can refer to it as an alkali as well, that's completely fine. Now, what's going to happen here is notice this, guys. Really pay attention to this equilibrium symbol, okay? And that's because the equilibrium can shift either way. It's not a strong base or a strong acid. Buffers always involve weak substances, so weak acid, weak base, right? So if we think about this sodium hydroxide, going back to what we added in here, we're dealing with adding an alkali in or a base, and it's a strong base. So we're going to be having our sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and we're going to have a forward arrow. It's going to break up into its positive ion and um, negative anion or hydroxide, okay? Now, because this is a strong base, it completely dissociates. We, we have an absence of an equilibrium arrow. We just have a one direction arrow. And that's because the equilibrium is so far to the right because it's completely dissociated. We can essentially think of the reactant as completely used up. Okay, all we're dealing with here is our products. So what this means then is that adding in a strong hydroxide, we have this, this hydroxide here. And what's going to happen is this is going to be added to this solution and it's going to affect the direction of this equilibrium arrow. And that's what buffers is all about. It's all to do with equilibrium, really. So what's going to happen here? Let's think about what's actually happening. So this hydroxide, this OH minus, is going to react with this H plus. OK, so let's actually write out the second equation here. We're going to have OH minus. Once it's broken down um, through the complete dissociation, going to react with the H plus and it's going to form water. Okay. Now what this means is that some of this H plus has been taken away from this equilibrium um, to form the water. So following Le Chatelier's principle, whatever happened to the equilibrium has to be fixed, right? I know that's a super simplified version, but that's essentially how you have to think of it. You have to think of it like homeostasis. So if some of this has to be taken away, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right to fulfill um, and replace the hydrogen ions that were lost in this reaction. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you're adding an acid to this, right, what ultimately that means is like, let's say we're adding um, HCl. So HCl, again, is a strong acid. It's going to completely dissociate into chloride ions and a proton, right? Again, this proton is going to add to the, the concentration or amount or moles, whatever you want to think of it, of the proton in this equilibrium. And to, to counter that, to get it back to where it's comfortable to reach equilibrium again, the equilibrium is going to shift to the left, okay? So just remember that buffers always relate to the equilibrium and where is the equilibrium lying, okay? Now, if you're thinking like, where the hell is he going with this? Like, why do I need to know this theory? You need to know it for the next stage of the calculation. So I'm going to use this question as an example, but you can apply this principle to any buffer calculation question. If you want to see a question where the equilibrium shifts in the opposite direction to this question, I've already done one on my channel, so I'll link it down below. Feel free to check it out. So next then, we're going to still stick with moles, okay? But remember, I, <laughs> I'm sort of all over the place here, but we have initial, we have final. We've worked out the initial, okay? So we've we've done this. This is initial. 
Now we want to work out final after the strong base has been added. So let's work out what the moles of the ethanoic acid is and the moles of the salt. What are they going to be? So the way that this works, remember I said when you add um, hydroxide, it's going to react with H+, plus, it's going to form water, and the equilibrium is going to shift in this direction, in the forward direction. Okay, and what that means is we have to take away the moles of hydroxide from the moles of the acid. Okay, and that's because if the equilibrium is going in this direction, in the forward direction, we have to minus the moles of hydroxide that were added from the, the acid. If it was going in the opposite direction, you would add it onto the acid because the equilibrium is going this way. Um, just try and wrap your head around that, practice some questions, and it will make so much sense after a while. And it's literally just like step-by-step -step process that you apply to these calculations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, um, let's put final. Okay, remember both of these are final after the things being, at, being added. So we'd have our initial moles, 0 0.13, and we have to minus the moles of the strong hydroxide, okay, the strong base. So it's going to be 7.00 times 10 to the minus 3. OK, now equally, when we look at what is the moles of the salt going to be, because it's on this side of the expression, it's in the forward direction, we have to add it on. OK, and that's again going back to the equilibrium. Where is the position lying? So what we have to do is we're going to do the moles of the ethanoate originally. So 0 0.0605 plus the moles of the hydroxide. OK, so if you put both of those in your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 0 0.123. Nice, easy one. And 0 0.0675 mole. OK, so that will be our next two moles. Really try and get your head around the fact that if you add a base, you take, take it away from the acid. And if you add an acid, you take it away from the salt. OK, and that's because the acid is on the left of the equilibrium and the, the salt is on the right of the equilibrium, okay? And it's as simple as that, guys. You can apply that to every single buffer calculation and make sure you get those six marks, okay? So next up, we have this Ka expression, okay? Now, every anytime you see this, they haven't just given it to you for chance and just like, you know, AQA is feeling friendly. They've given it to you because you need to rearrange it to find this. OK, or maybe maybe this in a different question, you just have to rearrange it to find a specific variable and then use that to find out the pH. So if we rearrange this then to make H plus the subject, it's going to become H plus equals and we're going to have Ka multiplied by it. And then we can just take all of this to the other side. Um, so we're going to times by this divide by this. OK, so it's going to be ethanoic acid concentration. All divided by the ethanoate concentration. OK, now these square brackets, as I've said, denote concentration. We can actually skip an entire step here and just use the moles. And the reason for that is because we have the exact same volume going on here. So if the volume, like if, uh, for example, concentration, if we rearrange this expression, it's going to be C equals N over V, right? So if we have C equals N over V on the top, and C equals N over V on the bottom, and the volume variables on the top and the bottom are both 500 centimeters cubed, you can cancel them out and just leave it as moles. So it's concentration equals moles, right? And they'll, they'll let you do that, that's completely fine. So you don't have to go to the stage of converting this into a concentration, you can just do it straight away, okay? So we have a Ka value here of 1.74 times 10 to the minus five, multiplied by our moles or our concentration, but you can do moles straight away, of ethanoic acid, so 0 0.123, divided by this right here, so 0 0.0675. Now, even though I could do that in this case, let's say the volume changed for whatever reason and the volume is different on the top and the bottom, you can't do that. Please always just keep that in mind in case you do have to formally work out what the concentration is. Don't skip a step when you can't and then just lose silly marks. So this is going to be 3.17 times 10 to the minus 5 once you put that in your calculator. OK, so we have a H plus concentration. All we have to do here is plug it into our pH expression. Do so you remember what the pH expression is? It's a real simple one. pH equals minus log H plus concentration. OK, 
So all we have to do then, I'm actually going to rub this H plus concentration out and put in our actual value. Um, it's going to be 3.17 times 10 to the minus 5. Put that in your calculator and you're going to get an answer, a long ass number, 4.49894 dot 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 dot. Right? What, how many decimal places do we want? We want two. It's already told us up here. So the final answer then is going to be 4.50. Okay. So the fifth mark would come from working out the H plus concentration. And the sixth and final mark would be from the pH to two decimal places. So six marks in the bag, not too bad. So let's quickly, before I wrap up the video, go for the examiner's report. This is an incredibly useful resource that not too many students use. So try and use it more often if you can, if you're really going for those A's, A stars. So how many students got six marks here? 34%, okay, 34% got six marks, which is surprisingly good. But hopefully if you watch my videos, 100% of you that do this should get four marks, <laughs> fingers crossed. So. What else did the examiner's report say? It says common errors involved failure to add or subtract the correct amount in moles of sodium hydroxide or to subtract or add in the wrong way. So they may have added the uh, the moles of the strong base here and subtracted it from the salt instead. Really try and understand the theory that I detailed in step two and you should be completely fine. Okay. So just pay attention in the question is an acid added or is an alkali added or a base, however you want to refer to it as, and then you will see what's going on with the question and you'll know exactly what to do in step two. So let's actually bracket this up as well. This is going to be final. Okay. Just so you, if you're taking notes or you, you're making some notes where you made your mistakes in your question, just remember these two steps, start with the moles and then work out how is the equilibrium changed? What's going on in the buffer? Okay. Hopefully that was helpful. If you found it helpful, give it a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Best of luck in your exams and revision, guys. Until next time, peace.